Hi. The pictures would be really nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Nat 19! <laughs> <laughs> Campaign 1, Session 17. We're here. We're us. You're you. Good to see Jeez, you. Do it. You look good. <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> I'm gonna have a caffeine chocolate to steady my nerves. Shut what the, the fuck up. Thank you. Exactly what is it you need to talk to me about? Well, it seems that you have an awful lot of information and Raleigh has a lot of information and I have a lot of information about the same thing, but we each don't really know what the other one knows. So I kind of just wanted to sit down and talk about it. All right. Suppose that could be arranged. If you're looking to get information about the tailors out of me, I'm not telling you anything. Oh, I don't care. All right. Are you sure you want to talk with, you know, him still around? Mm-hmm. I know he's your brother, but how well do you really know him? Well, I mean, he seems to already have an awful lot of information about me. So if you don't want to tell him anything, that's no, good. No, he's right. But I feel like he already kind of knows the a lot. The son of the head of the Driftwood organization is, uh, he is so totally right. I might not be trustworthy. I'm just <laughs> glaring at him. <laughs> I don't care for you. I'm just, I'm just sitting and watching, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, my eyes are going in between the two, like ping pong. Same. So, like, first of all, Rolly, I'm really happy that you're okay, and she's gonna hug you. I'm, Have this hug. And I'm extremely grateful you all came for me. Mm. <laughs> right, it's funny. Aristo didn't think we were gonna. <laughs> we were. I went into the mirror, and he's like, "You came." <laughs> yeah, I didn't want but, it. Still, uh, I'm extremely grateful to all of you. Seems I owe you a great debt. I don't. Yep. I think he paid that when he gave you his ear. Yes, I would hope our business is concluded. Maybe. I would really like some more finality to this. <laughs> if that is at all possible. I am missing an ear. Hey, Why were you, you in you, this? You, 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 he like points towards the basin you. that Raleigh was in, the one that the Esper uses to collect uh, offerings. Why were you in this? It's where he left his body. Yep. Stuff and reasons. Sort of. The Esper took his body and then... That's probably the most direct way to put it back. Spooky angel ghost in the thing. You'll see you later. Well, assuming you stick around. Weird. Mm -hmm. We uh, had to do a couple of things first, but uh, yeah, mm -hmm. simple oh, enough. God, what did it cost you? Not as much as expected. <laughs> Not a whole lot. It was a bargain to get you back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he like breaks eye contact when you say that. Clearly embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, you owe us a lot. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, Smoggy, you should look him in the eyes when you say that. It's rude. To I can't. <laughs> if I can't, I'll kill him. <laughs> if I do, I'll kill him. <laughs> That'd be counterintuitive. Yeah. All right. Hence the eyes shut thing. Well, yeah. Lexi, if you wanted to talk to me, exactly what do you want to know? I'd like to leave pretty soon and try to find my way back. <laughs> Okay, well, like, okay, so first of all, um, Rolly, I'm really, really sorry that I lied to you. The entire time that you've been gone, I've been thinking about it, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to tell you the truth and stuff like that, and then Alzandi just kind of told you. So I just wanted you to know that I was thinking about telling you mm -hmm. on my own before he just kind of told you. I see. Did I spoil something? Not Perhaps. supposed to tell people. Yet you seemed very insistent that I give up many of my secrets. Does that not strike you as perhaps we'll hypocritical? <laughs> I mean, I didn't do anything wrong to anybody here, so that was kind You of worked funny. for the family. We both know that cannot possibly be true. To anybody here. Oh, so well, it I only think. matters if it's to people here. People can change, and that's that's just how it is. And I'm. I don't do bad things anymore, and when I was doing bad things, I didn't realize that they were bad. I was told that they were for the greater good, so I didn't know what I was doing. Whereas the things that you were doing were purposefully selfish. I can see why I was needed for this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying honesty cuts both ways. I agree. That's why I wanted to tell you the truth, and I felt really bad about lying to you. <laughs> it's kind of weird that you're, like, attacking me when I'm apologizing to you for something that I did wrong. Well... 
I apologize if the wound is a bit fresh when I've spent weeks with you, all being very insistent that I spill every last detail of my life up until I met you. And yet, apparently, the rules don't apply to you. Marley. Yes? Mm -hmm. He points to the collar on his neck. You ever have one of these? This is why she's not entirely responsible for her actions, and why you probably are. And why... Why do you think? What sort of thing do... What do those do? It's the reason I'm going back. The exact details of it don't really matter. They make sure that we stay in line. Our kind are a bit rambunctious by nature, and we never get to go outside without one of them on. Lexi managed to get out without hers on, and in such earned her freedom. I'd be taking off as well if I could get this off. However, I highly doubt that you ever wore anything that kept you bound to the family. Am I wrong? No, not in any literal way. It's mostly just insinuations that I might not be welcome anywhere mm. else. Well, when you think about your combined past, maybe consider that. She didn't have a lot of choice. And Lexi, he's the son of the head of the Driftwood organization. And I know, he's but got I didn't know that until up. you showed up, sorry. Just don't interrupt me. Okay. And he has a lot of people that are currently trying to kill him. Puts his hand on his own chest. Maybe he was being cautious because he felt like he was in danger. I know, but I didn't know that. I just thought that he was a liar. That was just it. You Sounds to me like you both have I your reasons know. for lying. It's uncharacteristic of members of the family to act this way with each other, and you both know that. We didn't know that we were both members of the family. Even if you weren't, even if you didn't know. You're being awful embarrassments, and you both know that, and you know how what? we feel about that. What is this family you're, you're being all speaking about? Mean. It's a criminal organization. I didn't know it was criminal for a really long time, for the record. I could have guessed that. Centuries old, and apparently, both of us have been a part of it. Sorry I didn't tell you all that earlier. So, you're Contabile's son? Yes. The head Although, of it's not the sort of thing I was allowed to acknowledge. What you, you might call a bastard. You were sent hey. away, right? Yes, I... I was physically close by, but I was never publicly acknowledged as his son, and I wasn't allowed to tell anyone that I was. Contabelle didn't really act like your dad. He kind of... You had someone else who felt more like a dad? He all... look kind of sad, but he's, like, trying to hide it. Sort of. Oh, right. Oh, he's so <laughs> good I forgot to though. show that we got his art oh, updated. Oh, dear. Oh, my right? boy. Look he looks that so boy. good. Oh, oh. <laughs> that hairdo. I wife. Wow. <laughs> That's quite a wife right there. Um, yes, I've only ever talked to my father a handful of times in my entire life. I, practi He's practically a stranger. He sometimes really nice. I've been around him kind of a lot. Is that so? Yeah, but, um... it's it's actually kind of weird. I, I remember when, um, when he found out that he had a son, um, and he was really really panicked about it, and he he didn't really know what to do, and then Kevin was like, "Hey, why don't we train him the way that me and Lexi were trained?" And that was like the first time that I kind of thought about the fact that I was trained by them and that I wasn't where I was supposed to be. Oh, that is odd. And Let them come. You're, you're saying... <laughs> you're saying Kevin? And some rations over. Suggested over. I be trained? Mm-hmm. Kevin. And that was, that was when I started to not see... Aim on Kevin, if you're being so specific about it. Alzandi, jeez. Thank you. Everybody just calls him Kevin and you know it. You do. <laughs> I'm everyone. <laughs> I'm everyone. <laughs> but that was that was one of the times when I started to see him a lot less, and that was yeah. I didn't, yeah, he was busy doing that. I always thought it was Desmond who suggested I be trained. I mean, 
He's a spy. He has a lot of names. Desmond was one of them. It's like eyes, like, just go wide. Like, don't you agree that people have an awful lot of names, Aristo? <laughs> yes, it's just... The Kevin you're looking for is... Do you... Do you know anything about where he where he might have gone? No, that's kind of why I'm I'm like looking for him. The last thing I got told was like um he was done training you, and then he came back to train some more people, or at least he was supposed to, and he just kind of like ran off. So I guess he found his way to get out of being in the family too. It'd be nice to see him again. <clears throat> mhm. Mm Nodding eagerly. What it? Keep he shrugs and keeps leaning. Yeah. See, see, you know stuff that we don't know, mm. and this is why I wanted you to be part of this conversation because you knew you know an awful lot about me, and I don't know a whole lot about you, and I think that you should tell us some stuff. What do you want to know? Well, why wouldn't we want to see Kevin or Desmond again? All right. Well, in your case, uh, he left without telling you anything about where he was going, even though you're supposedly so close. And in your case, he pretended to be somebody else, and then once you were trained, it sounds like he came up with the cover story that that alias died, sounding to me like he wants nothing more to do with you. So, um, what do you expect reuniting's gonna look like? You were a job, uh, and you weren't worth bringing along. All I know is, until I met all of you, he's the only person who treated me with any kind of kindness. Um, out of curiosity, do you know if Contabile's still alive? He is. Cause... For better or worse. Yeah, because he was already really old, and then he, he got, like, badly hurt the night that I escaped, and I, I felt kind of bad about it. So On Raleigh's just... way out, he stabbed his father with a messite dagger that at the time was not inert. He takes out the dagger mm -hmm. and he, like, chucks it in the air, catches it by the blade. So... Assuming you know enough about this to understand what this does to people, you can imagine what he contracted from it. Oh. Your father has been slowly losing his mind and memories. He's got a lot of professionals looking after him. And I heard that they made a deal with another part of the family, with the Unseen Hand, to try to forward their research regarding how to cure it. They've oh. been intercepting certain documents. And trying to apply the research to their own. I'm not sure that's really going to help very much. No one's been able to figure out a cure for it. And it's only a matter of time before he's gone, and a new godchild will have to be appointed. Imagine those documents are Dr. Kaverium's work? I have no idea. I've never heard that name. No, the Unseen Hand is the other, the third branch of the family. Mm -hmm. They deal in magical item trade and acquiring things from the old world. A veritable mm -hmm. nationwide black market. They, uh... They don't answer to us. None of the branches answer to each other. I only know the, vaguely what they're trying to do. Because whenever you stabbed Contabile, having harmed a godchild, there was a brief meeting of the three branches to discuss what would have to be done about it. Information was passed around as it was needed. But once it was established what everybody would do, no more information needed to be passed. I have actually heard that the godchild, for the unseen hand, is relatively close to here. Really? Is that so? How close? Do you know any specifics? That's probably something I shouldn't tell you, but it's only supposition on my part. Well, we have some dealings with them, because the tailors are very often asked to go and try to steal magical items, or were sent as bodyguards when ex excavating old ruins and whatnot, because the Unseen Hand is interested in magic, and from our small dealings with them, the rumor is that the godchild of the Unseen Hand is currently one of the merchant lords of Summergrass. Oh, interesting. Exactly who, we have no idea, but they seem like they have connections into the uh, chain of commerce there that no one can really they explain. Seem to be able to, they seem to be able to go far and wide. We met one where we found you. Weird. Hmm. Hmm. Which one? We've got no idea. We're guessing it's probably not the king. That would be the kind of thing that we would all know. The, the High Lord Morian. <laughs> Although our family has had our uh, fangs sunk into the royal family for generations, so who knows, maybe it is Lord Morian. Stow that in the back of my head for a minute. <laughs> I've heard there's a Ganassi with them. I doubt it's them. We don't 
Our organization doesn't tend to put too much stock in those who don't have eyes on the material plane. Do you know anything of Edrigan Burmont? No, I can't say that I do. Sorry. Hmm. I'm not incredibly well versed with them. I know, I know they're mostly human, and there's a couple of outliers within the the, uh, the Lords of Summergrass, but I don't know a whole lot. Lord Morian's about the only name I can produce. I know his daughter's one of the Merchant Lords. Don't know what her name is. Information's really more your game than mine. You mentioned a doctor named Kyverium whenever I mentioned the research. No, we didn't. I did. <clears throat> No, we didn't. Uh. And you seem very curious about this particular topic. No, we're not. You're not making enemies of other branches of the family, are you? You've already got the tailors after you. The Driftwood organization obviously doesn't want to hear from you. Right. If you keep hanging around with Kyverium, and if you try to get in the way of the Unseen Hand doing its job for the Driftwood organization, you are inevitably going to bump heads with the Unseen Hand. So if you want to propose that to them... I suppose you could. Might be a tough sell if they know I'm around. Yep. I feel like me and Raleigh shouldn't go anywhere near that. Yeah. Pretty Raleigh's sure I, dead. I... That's true. Isn't that right, Aristo? <laughs> Is that who we're all calling him now? <laughs> Would it be better for us to just call you Aristo? Uh, I suppose for yep. the sake of safety, it would probably be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. That was the name I was throwing around the name Raleigh Vermilion or Raleigh Contrella might he might uh, reach the wrong ears. You're looking for our other supposedly surviving sibling. Yeah, and I really, really hope that I haven't found her, because like I've only ever I've seen one other Kitsadria, and she's not nice. Hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Witch your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where they would be. All I can tell you is that they're not with the tailors. We're it's a bit more open. Because, like, all of us were indoctrinated, right? Like, all of us were trained. And you know led to believe that the way of life that we'd taken up was completely normal. Mm -hmm. Taught that being rewarded for doing a good job with a chance to see the sun was a expected thing that everybody must be going through. Yeah, we were yeah. all raised that way. When I switched yeah. over to the tailors, things changed a bit. They were pretty straightforward about what our job was supposed to be. They were very, can you kill people? Yes. Cool. There was no more pretense beyond that. Though, what? some of the assassins at the higher levels have a bit more, uh, they're a bit more like him, points over at Raleigh, in terms of how they try to carry themselves. I hadn't realized exactly how trapped I was until I was transferred out. There's this upstart guild I've been telling people about. <laughs> Marimus puts her yep. hands in the air, uh, spreads them out. You see a bunch of lines appear in the air uh, out of shimmering blue magic, and just the highest standard writes itself in cursive, and then little oh, fireworks no. go. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> just points and just immediately. <laughs> little blue fire. What, what happened? Little little two dimensional <laughs> blue fireworks so cool. go off behind them and then they disappear into glitter. And then she goes back You're to in. she goes back to sitting mm -hmm. quite like sheepishly on her own as if she as if she'd interrupted. Oh, you're already in, but you're in. You did, you did a great job. That's you have wonderful. no idea how quickly you just made best friends with Quintus Mary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, adorable. What happened? I didn't see it. <laughs> oh no, Logan! It was great. It was like whoosh. Oh, you should have been there. It was great. I was here. <laughs> you need to open your eyes a little bit more. Yeah. When you guys you guys look to, to each other to talk, and then when you look back, Elzandi has turned into his fox form, which uh, is a you know big big puffy tail. Uh, still has very lazy looking eyes. Has the same blue markings covering his fox fur as he does normally. Oh. All right, all oh. of you can do that. <laughs> yes, I can do it as well. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, that's disappointing. I wonder if it would be fearless. <laughs> it tastes like a fucking hairless cat. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. Now oh, God. Well, now I'm disappointed. Come on, guys. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so he just like slumps way. off away. Oh, <laughs> we sounds so like, um, Aristo. 
We found something that made me think of you, and I've been holding on to it, and it's proven to be um, a good help. And so I figured, now that you're alive again, um, and she's going to produce the staff of the adder, Aww. and be like, you have a staff Aww. already, I know, and if you, you like that one more, I mean, like, whatever, but I just thought, <laughs> you know, and being happy, just take it. I love that elfish yeah. tongue. <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, like whatever. I'm not gonna no, like whatever. Cause like I care. Just, just shut up. They just speak so stupid. gracefully. <laughs> Hacken, get out of here. I speak Aww. celestial. No. <laughs> that takes skill. Uh, she'll say, hopefully, now that you're back to being alive, you'll work on, you know, push ups and stuff, and she'll punch his shoulder and join the group. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Oh, he sorry. bruises immediately. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. the fuck over. Oh, like, Charlie Horse, Charlie Horse. Uh, uh. Oh, dear. Okay, zoom in, Mortal Kombat x ray <laughs> Damn, <laughs> bitch. Blood if vessels you, pop, bones if, break. If you can't walk, I could carry you. No, no, it's, it's fine. Okay. But this... She's this, like halfway ready to fireman's thrown it's over fine. her shoulder. Your armor, your, it's fine, your armor cushioned the blow. <laughs> Fenris, why are you beating up a resto? Yeah! No, no reason! I it's just was having a jolly good conversation. I'm leaving now. Go Goodbye, Aristo. <laughs> She's like back in human form. <laughs> <laughs> that looks are like you... something I have to take care of. Goodbye, Aristo. She's gonna go to leave. Wait, I, I, are you sure you want to give this to me? This looks quite valuable. It's beautifully crafted. Yeah. I really must insist. That uh, you take it, it turns into, you say, oh, I named it Peanut, but I name that every animal Peanut. Um, <laughs> it's a beautiful name. Is it Elvish? <laughs> <laughs> um, Elvish for Peanut. <laughs> yeah, yeah it should be like, sort of, but the word for Peanut in Elvish is Peanut, so. But it turns into a snake, and I thought that fit the whole vampire aesthetic. Well, Aristo, add, add Elvish to your languages. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Specifically, peanut. Yeah. <laughs> peanut. Nose word, peanut. I don't know whether to be feel moved or slightly judged about the sinister aesthetic, but thank no, you. No, I think it's quite cool. I've never met a Danpai before. I actually was thinking quite a lot when you were gone about questions I had for you. I wondered for quite a while if you had a preference for the type of blood you prefer. Damn! Ah. <laughs> Is well, it mine? A, Do you prefer mm, mine? It's a well, medical uh, interest. I mean, because there's the different blood types, and then of course every race probably has a different consistency, perhaps. It's, I don't it's nerdy. I know it's pathetic. I no, it's the tastiest, Izzy. <laughs> it's fine, I suppose. I honestly couldn't quite remember. I mostly drank blood when I was very small before my handlers realized I could you know, eat solid food. Oh. After that, I've kind of done my best to not drink other people's blood. I don't know if you noticed, but I guess we're kind of matching now. And she'll gesture to her left horn, which is missing. Oh, and my left ear is missing. Yeah. Oh. Oh. We're amputee buddies. <laughs> is Fenris's is, is mm. right horn that's missing? What? Ah, shit. Well, that's ruined. You're well, you should probably get going before yeah. get too I'll far show behind. you net! Ah! ah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Tess. Tess, what are you doing to Lexi? She has my standard! <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised she can lift it in Fox form. Yeah, we should probably go help resolve yeah. whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna yes. scoop Lexi. She's whimpering in the net, oh. and you're just like, Wah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> oh, And okay. the hunter has got his prey. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize this shrine used to be a mansion. Oh. <laughs> you leave our mansion game alone. <laughs> we just need so our mansion you know, game. We weren't even around. Based on the foundation, okay. yeah, this place would be a pimpin' mansion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, let's just live here. Just build a house. Let's stay here, yeah. yeah. Let's build this a mansion. Build a Can house with an angel home inside. <laughs> Be right back. I take it then. Since you've called me, you want to know what I know about your pasts and futures, and then your 
to go on your way? We are here for the final part of our agreement, yes. She puts her hands out and a bunch of flowers, uh, the flower petals that you guys had scattered all weave together, and they form themselves into what appears to be a, a oddly colored piece of parchment, the fibers of the flowers splitting apart and fusing together into paper. Should I contact you, I will do so through your dreams. And if I do that, instructions to invoke me wherever you happen to be would be upon this. You've done a great service for me. I'm familiar enough with you that I believe I could find you, no matter where you are. As for the shadows that hang over you regarding your past and your future, which of you would like to know first? You All right. A medium. Your future is obscured somewhat. Something much greater than I shrouds it in shadow. I can see a chaotic tide overwhelming the world. A crystal of black and red, which you already know to be Sephirite, is locked within an ancient vault constructed by Idolans when they walked the world as mortals. A vault that, though you don't know this, you have been bred to open. I see the Sephirite within being stolen and being used for a great evil. This is very relevant to you currently. I see that the bandit Lord Murkwire seeks it. Your future, as far as I can see it, is that you will claim this Sephirite. You will deliver it to the hands of those who bred you. The one who cursed you. To be what you are. Fenris is going to step forward. Oh, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, I guess I started. <laughs> Yours is a past filled with abuse and compromise. And those who abandoned you when they couldn't withstand it, I see in your past they did intend to return for you. But they were unable. Your parents pursued a way to escape this world, and they found it. I see there is a secret sanctuary called Meadowgrass that looked to offer shelter to the druidic races of Retia when their country turned against them. I do not know where it is, but within it, all of those survivors who had vanished during the Accords remain in a deep sleep held captive by magics that they did not know that they had chained their minds to. Their memories are being gathered somewhere. They're living out alternate lives while they sleep. I can't even... I never imagined go to the back of the group. I, I guess I could go next. And uh, she walks back to the front of the group. <laughs> Got her! I need some, guys, I just need some time to think. Walks off screen. All right, I'm next. Walks back on screen, takes hand. I'll think here. No, wait. No, wait. <laughs> I can think. Like, let's be honest. I can yeah. think anything. Like, she's, she's, she's very much like holding Lexi's hand, but her mind is completely somewhere else. What's ahead of you is your attempt to find your lost friend, Kevin. And he is not lost. I see that he is where everything began for you. Your old base. It has been moved after being infiltrated as far as they thought had happened they changed locations so to find it would be difficult for you but if you did contabile is there and he knows where what you seek hides if you wish to gain influence over your future you have to find what your former allies seek that which your estranged family covets beyond that I do see something else, but it is confusing even for me. A path opening before you, a great swirling vortex of magical energy, and a comet so large that it fills the sky, made of all sorts of different colors, projecting the light of a rainbow upon the earth. She actually winces. For the first time you've seen the Esper, she displays a, an oddly physical reaction. Before, it seemed like she was more of a ghost than anything, but she physically seems to retract from that and takes her hand off your head. Oh, just the image of that in my mind is painful. Hey, I guess I'm next. <laughs> your home is under siege from within. An unknown threat in the land away has been tearing it apart from the shadows, even if everything seems normal on the surface. Your family home, it sits upon an ancient treasure that some in your family know to be there. There's a pre-Simonian ruin, a 
that holds a great secret of past importance, and your fate is tied to what is inside. Your father's death may have seemed circumstantial, but it set in motion events that will open those ruins again. And I see what is inside being used to tear apart the foundation of the Retian Empire. It was no mistake. Nor is you being here. Well, go ahead, Aristo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> if you're not going to go, you might as well tell her. Well, if you insist. She looks at you. Oh, I don't see anything from you. You better fucking. You, <laughs> you die in a up. gutter on the way back to the city. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Not you again! Did. We have to bring him all the way back here. Every time. <laughs> Who's got another apple? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yes. Tommy. As you walk forward, she puts her fingertips upon your forehead. Like with him. She gestures over to Mariam. Your past. It is obscured, but only slightly. A de some devilish being, that which I believe to be the one that inhabited your body. It has obscured information about you, even to me. But I can tell you this, that being that inhabited your heart for so long, that was a fiend of pride. It works with a group called the Whisperers. Your unknown past, that which you have tried to dig up, before you were discarded at the end, and that fiend fled from your body, you were used in a ploy to, among other things, corrupt the Lion's Council. That is where things began with you. <coughs> and your travels when you were under the control of that being within you led you to a place in Sermon Way, an old town called Gilligan's Pit. One that has been reduced to nothing but an, am an amniotic crater after a great tragedy that you played a part in. The events that happened there, things become clearer from that point. And I believe that is because the thing that was within you began to lose control of you there. Once it had, it tried to take you and use you to steal from the Crystal Queen before it completely lost control of your body. It managed to steal several items from her and then flee. If you want to retrace the steps that you took while under its control, the parts that I cannot properly see, there is one in the land away that you made contact with that knows enough that it could set you on the right path. The reason that the being controlling you went to the land away and made contact with a member of the Lion's Council was to set in motion a plan to try to open up those ancient ruins that are hidden beneath the strongholds there. And to do so, they had to create a power imbalance, using the many pieces at play in the land away. Using you, they directly planted the seeds that led to the death of Lucent Valorbilt. He'll, he'll turn toward uh, Quintus. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know. Exactly. He like breaks eye contact. He looks super. He wasn't ashamed. even looking at you. <laughs> oh, he was just like exactly, and he's he's just uh, he's turned away from everyone right now. <laughs> she slowly looks over to Vogan. Um, no, you know I'm good. You <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I've got enough guilt on me. I'm actually pretty good. <laughs> Tell me if I eventually kill Lekaza. <laughs> In exchange for this um, vision, I've been seeing things that I don't want to see. Could you get rid of whatever is afflicting me? She considers it for a moment. I'm not sure that... Mm. It's hard to ascribe worth to looking into your future, and I'm afraid it's not usually within my power to trade the results of one service for another. The debt isn't something that passes along in that way. Thought I'm sorry. A contract with me is something that becomes I become bound to. No, no, it's okay, Angela Cobb Goblin. Oh. <laughs> Floating <laughs> like a zod. <laughs> oh, no. I thought I gave it a shot. Oh, well. Let's get this over with. Puts her fingertips on the, on the the great expanse of forehead that is your head. Yeah. <laughs> bald. He's bald. Bald. bald! My eyes. <laughs> the pa 
path that you walk is marked by karma. That of your past life that you must weigh your future against. Before you may breathe peace deeply, you must exhale and relinquish the animosity you've accumulated through your life. Your teacher will help you walk the path to redemption, but know that she is also doing the same, and so cannot carry you along it. The pilgrimage that you are on is a path that you should stay on if you wish to find a better future for yourself, but it is also threatened by a great shadow, one that if you continue down the path you're on to find the temples of the Eidolans, you will inevitably cross and find yourself entangled with. It also seeks the shrines. However, this beast, it has not stirred since a time before the world as we know it. Some time remains before it begins to move again. This evil is something that Merkwire, the bandit lord that has crossed you, unknowingly serves. If you try to stop Merkwire, you may prevent it from getting its way, but it is a being of such power hidden away in such a way that I do not know exactly what it wishes for. You could prevent becoming entangled with it by changing your path. To do so, you would sacrifice everything that you have accomplished toward your future. If you wish to stay on the path you're on, allow me to grant you some direction. This is something that I can do, that you may overcome that threat that lays before you. Making contact with the Eidolans in their temples ahead of time, before this creature finds those shrines, would be prudent. Two of the temples are known commonly, the Temple of Tequin and the Temple of Haros. The other two are a secret, kept by certain academics, but the Temple of Vestius, it is within Grey Rock. It is high in the caves of the volcanic Mount Karna, Fire giants guard it, so if you seek it out, prepare to barter or fight your way through them. The Temple of Amir is in Sermon Way. I do not know its exact location. I presume that it is within a forest, because that Idolan, the wise forest, Amir, hides it from beings such as myself. However, if you wish to make contact and make this pilgrimage properly, there is a ritual of meditation you must be taught. You still must seek out the priest in the academy, the one that you had already been trying to find. He can teach it to you. Once you have that, you can make your pilgrimage properly. Come in! <laughs> uh, finally okay. back, I see. Come on in! Come on in! Uh, which one of you is it? Looks over. Ah! Ah! It's magnified too much. Ah! He takes off the goggles. Ah! ah. It's all of us. Oh. Are you doctor? Uh, hello? Hello right. again. Hi. <gasps> I see that you've recovered. Yeah, mostly. Bit, uh, bit under the weather and, uh, sands an ear, but, uh, otherwise can't complain. Mm, the better part of two days, you were, uh, you were all gone, and are you all better for it? Uh -huh. For the most part, say. <laughs> Looks at this tiny goblin. Are you, are you ready to, are you ready to get back, are you ready to get back to your, uh, to your fort? Yes, I, I would very much like to get back and collect my research, what's what's left of it anyways, uh, to move it uh, preferably to somewhere within Summergrass if we're going to continue our work there. I can't imagine Fort Depot was doing well after we left. Hmm, well. We're planning on setting up some sort of a home if we can find one in summer if some in Summergrass if you're willing to stay with us. I am. I will say that I feel that this group may... Find there's some difficulty in purchasing land within Summergrass, but uh, if you're not terribly picky about the location, the Electory District might might suit you. I can't imagine the Electory District being a problem for any of us. Good evening, ma'am. Hi. Uh, hello again. Uh, I don't suppose Griffin is around. I'm afraid not. He's uh, out in the. He's currently out hunting. Well, I would like to leave a message with him if I could. Uh, however, I'd also like to leave you with something as well. Yep. As thanks Come. for attempting to put us up that night, and also you, as speaking a, an of, are you all right? Missing... The lot of you said that you'd be coming back again, and you, we got concerned when you disappeared and you didn't take your carriage with you. <laughs> we got. As I said, this would be an apology for missing out on that wonderful dinner you would have made for us. All right. I had, I had spoken with uh, your husband about potentially 
setting up your little warrior over there with uh, with the uh, with the Knights of the Red Lions. If so, if she so decides to when she gets older, of course. She smiles warmly at you, trying not to move around too much. She is, especially even since you guys have been gone, she is much more evidently uh, pregnant than she was. Aww. She was pregnant last time. Now she's pregnant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> as well as. He's like, like start, he just like looks over. He's like, I didn't expect him not to be here. No, no. <laughs> and she doesn't if, know. Um, <laughs> it asked long that we had um, we'd accomplished the task we'd agreed upon beforehand, and he needn't worry about it any longer. You did it. I hope That's that all. I hope that you all live very healthy and happy lives. If we never <laughs> see each other again, uh, I will mourn. But I do <laughs> wish one day maybe our paths will cross. I will hand over. Uh, I will hand over a couple of gold to her for the horses. You keep handing your money away. You never <laughs> yeah, I will. Armor, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking! I already gave him two platinum. Here's two more gold. <laughs> oh this is why you don't have armor. <laughs> I, don't why so I don't understand why he's not here. Why does he need to work anymore? I don't get it. <laughs> no, you. <laughs> I already gave him two platinum. I don't know, man. He just loves it. Why he's hasn't he? For a year. Why hasn't he retired? <laughs> I will All right, well, let's go get while. peanut and peanut. <laughs> <laughs> <Let's go laughs> peanut and peanut. I feel like you're teasing me now. <laughs> that was really Logan already. Yeah. Logan already in the cart, just like, let's go already! Hold your horses! A man just walks by the cart, like, hey, how you doing? Get out of here, like I said! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to shorthand it and say that uh, I'm going to spend a bit. On Wednesday, the 16th of July, you guys return to the gates of Summergrass. If you want to keep going, you can head up to Fort Deepwell from here. Um, or you can stay in the city. It is your call what you guys do. I'm going gonna, gonna to I'm gonna ride into the town, barring anyone stopping me, and we'll head oh, yeah. to the blacksmith. So we know no. exactly mm -hmm. what we're looking at. As you guys enter into the town, uh, a voice raises in a... <laughs> In the sense of projection, it is a tired voice. Uh, raises to catch your attention as you're moving by. You'd be the highest standard, right? My ears are trained to hear those those words. Yes. <laughs> it's taking you a while to get back. Looks over toward this person. You mm -hmm. turn to see a man leaning up against one of the walls. Uh, oh, oh, oh my oh. god! That's a wife. Shit. That's a wife. How you doing on it? I'm might a be the highest standard. Who are we speaking to? Oh, uh, just some low life. Where well, were you? Come in? on in. <laughs> well, nice to meet you, low life. He goes over and <laughs> extends a hand. He doesn't shake it. He like looks down at your hand. You don't know. Don't know what. Pretty nice day today, huh? If I were Why? you, Why lot, we I'd be careful moving around at night. You might want to check in ah, with Journey. He might have a couple interesting things that you need to know. Keep that in mind. He starts walking away from you guys. Be seeing you. I'm sure. Hopefully on pleasant terms, friend. Mm-hmm. It's always Indeed. pleasant around here. This is summer grass. The golden city. Well, that was Whoa. odd. I feel that that's <laughs> not true. <laughs> Yes, he makes me Did you find wary. that odd? That was He's odd. a mercenary, Quinn. Oh, okay. I have a feeling that perhaps we It's have likely not... that word from some of our enemies have made it into the hands of adventurers, so it wouldn't be surprising if some degree of price is on our heads, and if oh, his self-described no. lowlifeness is anything to go off of. That was a friendly warning, something he didn't have to, so I respect him for it, but I don't trust him as far as I could throw you, Quinn. That's not very far. Hmm. It's not at all, Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You've tried. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's go get your oh, armor yeah. and then we'll speak to Journey. As you go to Legum's place, which once again, uh, there is a building, but it is lar he does most of his work in a large uh, outer area, this large yard that he has. Uh, you see that he appears to be putting together, as you come close, a whole bunch of... Uh, it looks like disassembled chunks of, like, wall and all sorts of equipment that it looks like he's building the parts of a stage whenever you guys come in. Mm. Hello, friend! Yeah. Mm. What are you doing? Putting on some sort of show? Working! On what? 
He he holds up a large chunk of hammered metal very proudly, as if you should know exactly what it is, but it just looks like a large slab of metal that's taking some shape. Nice large I, slab of metal. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Planning for the upcoming <laughs> festivities, I see. Yes. Lord Lilywind has requested that I construct a stage worthy of any fighter. So I will construct oh. the greatest stage this city has ever seen. Mm. Oh, I too much. He looks we to you guys, to, uh, his muscles rippling. What can I do for you? We were hoping to follow up on a previous uh, promise Quinn made of wanting to commit one of the greatest armor sets you could possibly make. You want it Nothing short of masterwork. Masterwork. <laughs> You see his eyes flicker open. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love him so much. I don't have many chances to make full plate meal to that quality. There aren't many here. My father before me did construct armor for those knights from a land far from here. I've craved a chance to do so. I come here seeking the same. I have your measurements. Hmm. It He'll would put cost. down his half of his half of the of the payment onto the onto the uh, the thing in front of him. If you were to give me a week, I could acquire armor from elsewhere, and from it, I could make modifications to make you what you want. That sounds acceptable. We'll be gone for about that long anyways, maybe slightly shorter. It would cost 250 platinum. Oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> he just nods like, I understand. Hmm. A deal, perhaps. The tournament is coming up. <laughs> Lord Lilywind is going to try to host this fight, right? Those who compete may have their armor damaged, or would seek more in the future. I would reduce the cost by 50 smiles. platinum. In return, wear my emblem upon your armor. Oh, you a sponsorship a deal! <laughs> Good. You might want to put it somewhere my tabard doesn't go, but I would love to. Hmm. <laughs> When the blades of your enemies bounce off of your steel hide, they will know that it is masterwork. They will know it was forged by the hands of Legum, and they will come crawling, looking for work for themselves. I accept! He stands, you hear the furnace inside his, uh, his workshop ignites again as it did before without him being near it. Puts his hand out. 200 <laughs> platinum! I'll we'll see you in a week, my friend. Indeed. Make hey, uh, the stage as grand as you can put me on. Hey, when is the tournament? Yeah, it sounds really fun. I its exact it. date has yeah. not been announced yet. Lord Morian will be stepping down from the throne soon. It is believed that as his daughter is the one that is putting this on, the tournament will be thrown as a celebration to the, of the passing of the torch from one lord to the other. If, ha if it happens in the next week, keep us posted. We'll be, mm -hmm. we'll be back. I'm sure that an announcement would have been made if it was that soon. I would guess near the end of the month. I look forward to seeing it. Indeed. Mm -hmm. We'll keep an ear out. <laughs> Raleigh. <laughs> <laughs> He's barely containing a stupid smile. I just love the fact that I know for a, I know for a fact Spencer had Bogan point and laugh at that fucking I Arena again. No. <laughs> it's like he doesn't have to say it. I know it happened. Keep your wits about you. You uh, pass by the... Once again, there's a, a halfling with one arm in the front, as there always is. Urban, you've talked to him before. Um, yeah, assuming no one stops us, I'll just make my way towards Journey's office. Same. Yep. As you guys walk through, mm -hmm. you see that there appears to be a somewhat of a crowd in here. It's not a lot. It's like maybe eight to nine people, which is infinitely more than you've seen in here previously. The bar appears to be open, which it normally isn't when you guys come in. Not everybody in here looks like an adventurer. A lot of the people in here seem to have just come into this place as if it were a tavern. The first uh -oh. thing you see is there's a, it includes a list of people that is <laughs> formatted in such a way that you see it. The first thing you read on it, reading, a hobgoblin named Vogan. As soon as you <laughs> see that- <laughs> As soon as you see that text, you grab it. This one is titled Danger to the City. Oh no! <laughs> the bulletin reads- I'm looking for a name. <laughs> Who the filed this? <laughs> Who did this? The client uh, is listed as someone named Swinderlinger. Uh, secondary, it seems like he is from a company called the Frostclaw. 
They're offering a generous reward and help uh, uh, to, for help in capturing the group. The group is to be brought in alive, as per the instructions, and is comprised of the following known individuals. A hobgoblin named Vogan. A dompier named Raleigh Contrella, who might be going by Velus. A shadow fae. A tiefling with purple skin. A half-elf named Thela Hadley. A human knight. <laughs> A human knight going by Lucent Valorbuild. They have stated Ooh. that if they must be brought in dead, they will pay half for them. I would like to stress that though the support of the Merchant Lord means the assassination of these individuals is legal within the city, the authorities will not overlook the death of anyone who is not confirmed to be the targets. Killing those of a similar description without proof that they are the targets will be treated as a crime. Details with, uh, for meeting with the Frostclaw are contained within the dictation included. Though it's barely legal, this job has a high risk of political involvement, so I urge anyone taking it up to be cautious. The reward for it, if everyone is brought in alive, if all of you are brought in alive, is 160 platinum pieces, 100 if you're brought in dead. The, and you also, under the terms, find the individual individuals and capture them. They put an emphasis on capturing the Tiefling and Shadow Fae in particular and will accept them alone if they're alive. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who wow. I wonder who filed this one. <laughs> meet the no no. meet the frost claw informant at the dragging dagger or find them at the touch of lavender. <laughs> so we should leave here soon. Uh, I believe that's where we're gonna stop for today. Uh we'll see we'll see you later, oh. YouTube. Goodbye. Goodbye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube. Bye. Bye.